So the problem I wrote down is how many ways are there for students to be distributed in the library if there are 100 students and seven floors? So when you first look at this problem and you just only had the lecture that we did last time, you might be like, there's an and. That might be the product rule. So you have to ask yourself some other questions. Does order matter? And usually we're talking about order of something. Probably doesn't matter, right, in this problem? So the thing we were talking about before with the donuts is we can't tell them apart. So have you ever heard this word distinguishable in an annoying statistics and probability class probably? So we're doing the mini statistics and probabilities portion of this class. Okay. So Distinguishable and indistinguishable objects are probably the most annoying thing about counting. So if the items are not distinguishable, if they're in a certain category, you pretty much have a divider problem. So if the answer is no, not except, by what? What, does, what do I imply in the question here that I care about? Which floor they are on? So I'm kind of asking about the usage of the library, like what floors do people go to? That's implied by the question. It's not really explicit. And that's the big problem with counting problems is almost all the time we have a not really explicit description of what we're trying to count. And so what we have to do is get it as explicit as possible. So no, we can't tell the students apart except by what floor they are on. So all I really want to know, like you want to read, it, read between the lines of this question, this is a question that a librarian might ask for figuring out how to distribute resources. So if everybody's on the first floor and nobody's on the seventh floor, you might want to put some cool stuff on some of the other floors to get them to move around because otherwise all your stuff's going to get worn out on one floor and nobody's going to use the other stuff. So you want to take your cool stuff and spread it around so people will go and not put so much wear and tear in one place. Or maybe you actually want them all on the first floor because then your cleaning staff can just clean one floor. But you have to make decisions, and you're going to make them based on where people go. In a similar way, you're going to have to make decisions, like people make decisions all the time about where to put bus stops or how to run schedules, things like that. We have to count how many people are in places at certain times, and all we really care about, we don't care about who they are or where they're going. We just want to know what time are you going to be at the bus stop if I put it here? What time are you going to be at the bus stop if I put it there? Which bus stop are you going to go to? So. We're basically going to categorize people by what floor they're on. And as soon as I can only tell people apart by some feature that they have, I'm talking about kinds. So now I can transform this into another problem where I can draw a picture of the library that looks a heck of a lot like a form. There's not 100 people in here, but basically I could draw a form like that and show you a distribution of people in the library at any time. And as long as the number of dots on any rows, you know, different between two sheets, then there are two different representations. But I'm not caring about which student is where. I can't tell them apart except by what floor they're on. So now I'm actually... I've just transformed this into a divider problem. Every single representation is going to have ones where we have dots on here, and we'll have a zero wherever we have the dividers. And then we'll have these floors. So two different representations, two different diagrams have different numbers of dots on any two floors are going to be different representations. So I put an extra dot there, so let's, and I took one off of there, so actually I put another dot there. So those are two different distributions of people at the library. 
So I've actually transformed this into, I can now represent it with a string. So I've got a form, but I can represent it with a string, which is ones for all the dots in one of the, um, one of the floors, and then zeros for the actual floors or the dividers in between. Okay, so this representation here, if I start with one on the left, it would be a one, so, and then a zero for this floor, and then another one. So there's going to be zeros. So one, 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 one. So one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. Zero, one, one, one. So that's my first one. And my second one, we'll have zeros for all of the rows, ones for the peeps. And if we start at the bottom, we'll get zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. Those are clearly different strings. They are representing different things. If I have the same number of ones and the same number of zeros, then I'm talking about distributing the people across the floors. So if I have 100 floors, I'm sorry, 100 students and seven floors, which things are the kinds? Which floor are you were on? You have a question? You're right. Thank you for correcting that. So that is my correct representation there. Um, so now, the kinds are the floors. So how many dividers do we have? We have six dividers. And if we make a string that has six dividers and 100 items, how many places do we need? We need 106. So we're going to take 106 slots, and we're going to choose where the six dividers go, or we're going to choose where the 100 students go. So these are my two answers that are equivalent. So we're numbering, you know, everything in our string that we're going to have, and we're going to um, choose out of a hat either where the six dividers go or where the 100 students go. Questions? Okay, so the questions that are going to tell you you have a div divider problem. If the answer is two, does, does order matter is no? Are the items distinguishable? If the answer is no, not except by what kind or some category, then you know you're working with a divider problem. Um, the other thing that you might ask yourself is, is there replacement? Again, another confusing problem because I'm not going to take a person out and replace them. So in the original problem that was specified, how many ways are there to distribute the students, there is a replacement because I can have more than one student, and I'm not, I can't tell them apart. So this is intertwined with the distinguishable or indistinguishable problem. So if I ask you if there's a replacement, I'm also asking you between distinguishable items. So yes, there is a replacement because I can have lots of students that I can't, in, I can't distinguish from each other. So if I think about strings and replacement, if I'm saying, can I replace letters from the alphabet, if I can have two letters that are the same and I can't tell them apart, then yes, I have replacement. If that's possible, then I have replacement. So these two questions, if, they are, if the answer is yes to whether there's replacement and whether the items are distinguishable, if it's no except by category, then you know you have a divider problem. So this is pretty much what your, a textbook would call a problem that is where order doesn't matter and you have replacement. And so there's not a formula for this kind of problem because you need to transform it into another kind of problem because it's too confusing to write it any other way. So you need to actually transform it into a regular combinations without replacement. That's what this formula is for. So that formula is for combinations without replacement. So that's why I can throw all my numbers for positions in my string in a hat and then choose out where the dividers go. So that is a transformation from the original problem into a problem without replacement. And that's what we want to do because that's much easier to count. 
So these are combinations with replacement is what they're called.